Mike Papantonio, attorney and host of Ring of Fire Radio, is here joining us. You know, uh, Mike, I've been following the Republican primary race very closely. I'm starting to question whether Republican insiders should be scared, no matter who is going to end up being the nominee, just the mere involvement of people <laughs> like Sarah Palin, Donald Trump when he was in it. This has to be scaring Republican insiders quite a bit, doesn't it? Well, it does because the, the ticket all flows from the top. I mean, what happens to the undercard matters uh, because of what happens at the top. You know, this movie, cl I, I know you know the movie classic, One Flew Over Cuckoo's Nest. There's this scene where the lunatics are bouncing off the wall, David. I mean, they're running around the institution. They're making monkey noises. They're dangerously unstable. And Nurse Ratchet makes the statement, now everybody calm down the best thing we can do is return to our daily routine. <laughs> well, it, the daily routine for the GOP is exactly what's creating the lunatic house. I mean, that's what's exactly happening around the GOP institution. The lunatics are in charge. Michelle Bachman is a product of that GOP lunatic crazy house. If you, if you followed her, even rank and file Republicans are thrilled that Bachman might really be a presidential candidate. Well, it's funny because I hear, I read some editorials from people saying this is all the same cycle. We see 92 Clintons elected and the 94 Republicans do well and so on and so on. It's always all the same. But this actually does seem different to me. Number one, because of the, these just bizarre Republican candidates that are affecting the, the race, but also because a lot of the standard criticisms of Democratic candidates, like, for example, Democratic presidents will not use military force. They will hesitate to do that, or mm -hmm. they will not be strong on uh, right. wars. Barack Obama falls outside of the box on all of those things. Yeah, one thing that one thing you see happening in a cycle like this where they know their chances of success are very, very slim it's not, it's not the race that matters, uh, David. It's the, it's the message. And so what you do is you, for, for an entire you know, year and a half, you have people delivering the message, and all they are is vehicles. Ba Bachman is just nothing but a tool. Uh, P Palin is nothing more than a tool. Uh, so is Romney. All of them are simply the, kind of, the, kind of the, the, the organ grinder monkey that's out there de de delivering all of this the, the, these conservative notions. And, you know, at the top, they don't really care whether these people are elected. They just want to keep... Who is at the top? That's the a question, though. Who is actually at the, the top? The top? The top are people that, are, are, that back these people. I mean, you know, uh, with Clinton, it was Wall Street. You know, Wall Street was the money. It was the, back then, it was the Goldman Sachs. It was the Citicorp. It were the people that you'll always see them developing the next person. Uh, they're doing it right now. I mean, for example, uh, they don't really care much about this cycle, but they're developing the candidates for the next cycle. You might have heard Hurley, Haley Barber come out maybe a couple of weeks ago, and he says, well, we have some people, basically comes out and says we have some people we're developing. Doesn't put it like that, but that's, that's the essence of what he's saying. And so what he knows is these are all throwaways. I mean, look. You know, plenty is like watching, it's, it's like watching it rain. Plenty, you know, the, 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 you have to decide, well, do I want to go listen to a plenty speech or do I want to watch paint dry? Uh, Mitt Romney, he's, he's dead on arrival. He'll never play in the South. The problem with him is he's a Mormon. And I'm in, in, in the South, that is, that's a cult. In the South, it's regarded as a cult. Well, Republicans, they have to have the South. You can't, they can't live without the South. Uh, just go down the line. Uh, P uh, Palin, no, nobody's serious about Palin. I mean, really. Th there's Palin's nobody. not even serious about Palin. No, no, she's not even serious about Palin. Uh, Newt Gingrich, he'll never overcome the fact that, you know, he went to his wife on her, after surgery, after cancer surgery, and on that day tells her that he's leaving her for a, a, a younger woman. Then he tells that younger woman years later that he's leaving her for a younger woman. Uh, they'll never forget the fact that he did the, the, the uh, unprecedented in the history of Congress. He had been fined the highest amount that any congressman had ever been fined because of his con because of his conduct, his unethical conduct, his use of money for for his personal life, uh, the uh, siphoning off of if, off off his uh, off his pack for his personal life. It, the, the stories went on and on and on. So I mean, so so he's not a contender. So you go down this list and you say. Well, where does it end? Well, it doesn't end. You know, Howard Kane, I mean, are you kidding me? He looks like a character out of a Medea movie. Herman, I mean, Herman Cain. Uh, huh? Herman Cain, not Howard. Uh, what did I say? I, I meant Herman Cain. Yeah. Cain, Herman Cain. But, I mean, he's not, a, he's not a serious contender. So, I mean, 
let, let's call it what it is. So the next question is, is, do they even have time to put a serious contender in there? And of course not. I mean, you, you don't throw a surprise candidate up there right now and say, gee, this guy's going to run. Huntsman. Look, Huntsman's too smart for him. I mean, this they're not going to take him seriously because he believes in things like global climate change. He knows that the Earth isn't, uh, you know, isn't 6,000 years old. He realizes that it's 4 billion years old. Uh, he doesn't believe in all the, the, the crazy evangelical nut talk that you have to believe in in the South to be a Republican. Hey, speaking, uh, so, of, speaking of nut talk, though, last time you were on, we had a little bit of a discussion about the, the Tea Party and the future of the Tea Party. Mm -hmm. And I just read the Tea Party now is saying they will endorse whoever is the Republican nominee. And is this not another indication that the Tea Party will either disappear altogether or become indistinguishable from the Republican Party, which they yeah. claim to have nothing to do with? David, you've been talking about this since they emerged, as, as I have. The Tea Party is nothing but it. it look, it, it was a way it was a way to redefine the crazy, crazy part of the Republican Party. That's where it started. And then what they did is they gobbled up the identity of the Republican Party. I mean, it's, it's the same thing. They're interchangeable. The same crazy people who were dressed up like Paul Revere and Martha Washington <laughs> holding up signs of, uh, of Obama is a monkey. Those are the same people who've always been Republicans. There's no difference. If I were to go to a Tea Party rally here in, uh, in, in the South, they're the same people who used to go to Republican rallies. Hell, they're the same people who used to go to David Duke rallies. So there's, there's nothing has changed here. They don't, look, they don't really change much. All they do is split the vote uh, on, you know, smaller races, they split the vote. Uh, and so the Republicans have a problem with the Tea Party. The Tea Party is never going to be, a, 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 is never going to be the kind of force that moves uh, m the political agenda in this country. It'll be a discussion, but they're not going to move uh, with any meaningful force. Real quick before we go, who, is there a serious candidate on the Republican side? Who do you think is going to be at the top of that ticket? Well, I think they have to go with, I think they have to go with uh, Mitt Romney, even though he's not going to win. I mean, hmm. look, Mitt Romney, what it, was it, a, a million dollars per Per, was it a million dollars per uh, 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 per per delegate vote that it cost him in the last election? That's not going to change. He, but they got to go with him. They have to go with somebody that doesn't look like a damn fool. You know, at least he presents well. At least he has a narrative that sounds like something more than uh, a, a, an eighth grade education. So they have to go with somebody that at least can project that, and that would be my bet. I mean, that's, and, and, that, and the other problem he's going to have, which we're already seeing, is here in Massachusetts, where I am, he put in a health care plan that then right. he opposed when Obama put it out there, and his explanation is, I'm fine if the states decide on it, which is still, he's okay with socialism, if that's what he's calling it at the federal level. He's okay with it as long as it's state socialism. Yeah, but I, again, it doesn't matter to them. They don't really care at this point, David. This is not about winning the election. This is about having those talking points out there and simply getting ready for the next cycle. All right. Host of Ring of Fire Radio and attorney Mike Papantonio, thanks for joining us, Mike. Thank you, David.